Today we're gonna fit these wheels onto this bike thanks to a little bit of help and support from this link. Let's dive into it. We're rolling. Gotta rinse off the old stumpy. I've been uh, riding this bike a bunch. I've been enjoying it. And I've played with all the adjustments. I even put a cascade link on here, but there's one critical adjustment we haven't made yet to the stump jumper. Today, we're gonna do that. Oh, perfectly good. Totally practical 29 inch wheel with a very heavily worn out tire. We're gonna rehome you. Not what any wheel wants to hear. First step will be to swap off my cascade link for the specialized mullet link. This kind of seems a little bit too easy. What am I doing wrong, everyone? Generally a pretty well thought out system for swapping the link, but not quite easy enough to do on the side of the trail in the wind and the rain while well, you've got to be. It will be fun to try these two settings back and forth on all the trail sections. You guys should do that video and then tell me about it so I can watch it. All right, mullet wheel number one. First step to a mullet, put in a 27.5 back wheel. Second step, get ready for business time. It's business time. 29 inch front wheel. For the uninitiated, a mullet wheel setup means a 29 inch front wheel with a little 27.5 inch rear wheel. Look at that, we got a mullet. Well, it wasn't even hard. So I'm gonna need to adjust my rear shock pressure. It's probably up a little high because I just took off the cascade link. So I'm gonna take this thing for some rides and I'll let all of you know how it feels, how it differs, if it's better, if it's worse, the end all be all. No, I'm just gonna try it, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm optimistic because so far this bike's been super fun. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's only a beautiful day up here. This is my first ride on the Stumpy Evo with the mullet link and setup. I've ran the same mullet wheel set on the Chrome Egg Stylus and also on the Niner WFO E9. So I do have some experience with these wheels, not totally, totally fresh here. Whew. So we got sun shining, so it looks warm. It's not. Because it's not warm, I'm stuck wearing this jacket so I don't get too cold on the descent. As a result, I am quite sweaty. I feel kind of like a pickle inside a saran wrap. As you're in this position, it's important to stay hydrated. You can drink tons of water, you'll just end up going to the bathroom a ton, but what you really need are some electrolytes. So I've been lucky enough to partner with the fine folk at Element. Element's a really simple electrolyte supplement. A little bit of potassium, magnesium, sodium, tiny bit of stevia extract, very simple, basic ingredients. And what this does is it replenishes the electrolytes that you sweat out over the course of your mountain bike ride, your day, whatever it is you may be doing. This right here is the watermelon flavor. It's quite good. Pretty exciting and fruity and tropical, which is nice when it's this cold out. And what I generally do is one water bottle with the electrolyte supplement and then a camelback, and it helps me last a lot longer when I'm out in the woods. For a limited time now, Element's offering a free sample pack for subscribers of my channel. Just hit the link in the description below, drinklmntelement.com slash Jeff, J-E-F-F. -F. And with any purchase uh, from their website, you can get a free sample pack as long as you use my link. Big thanks to Element and big thanks to all of you. Thus far, you guys have been trying this stuff and your feedback's been great, so that's awesome. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's feel this out. Oh. oh. I know this video is supposed to be all about opinions of wheel sizes and bikes and all that. We'll get to that. But let's just take a quick moment to appreciate how good late winter trail conditions can be in this neck of the woods. There was just a trail day here organized by the WMBC and I think intrinsic flow. Yes, plenty of rain, some snow. We had about three weeks off the trails, but you know what? It's just so good that you just wanna keep coming back. Kinda like when you're going to the bike shop and still running inner tubes, Whoa. you just gotta keep going back. Oh, the hill sure got a haircut. I think they rerouted the trail here. There used to be a sweet jump to the right, it's hip. The WMBC is our local advocacy group. They do an amazing job, and I'll run a link to their membership page down in the YouTube description just below here. This is one of my favorite jumps on Galbraith right up here. Sweet, still there. 
Ooh. Bike is a little bit more nimble. Now by more nimble, I mean it's a little bit easier to lean the bike in the corners. If you watch me ride, I never really had a problem with leaning the bike with its original 29 inch wheels. So this may or may not be something that's important to you, but for me, being able to lean it wasn't really a problem out of the gate. Okay, it feels largely pretty similar. I do think it's important to explain that this wheel set's set up incredibly heavy duty. It's running tough casing tires front and rear with a 2.6 rear tire and a cush core in it. This is my favorite combo for the hardtails, and that's because I need that extra little bit of cush that cush core provides, and I absolutely need as much flat protection as I can get because I want to run pressures in the high teens and low 20s. Typically first rides are pretty awkward and are best left not shared with the whole wide world. So let's grab Riley and head up to the hills and go film on one of my favorite little local jaunts. This way you guys can better see what the wheels are doing on the trail. Also, this is about three weeks after this because we had to let a bunch of snow that fell melt away. Ugh, I just keep getting off center, this is ridiculous. So now let's get on the trails real quick and I'll tell you all about how things are going with the mullet wheels. I feel like I'm on my C minus game today, but you know what? That's still passing. Climbing performance of the little 27.5 wheel is indeed acceptable. You do there notice go. you've got a little bit less Not rollover with that than with the larger 29, and traction, honestly, with both wheel sizes is generally okay, but better with 29. That's so awkward. That's a hard manual turn. I'll give it another go, but it's gonna be hard to hold it past, like, into the puddle zone. Here we are at some of my favorite woods in the Pacific Northwest. Came out here, one of our favorite trails kind of dried out a little bit quicker than some other ones. So we're able to actually ride this thing in front of the camera for the first time. So I've spent a few weeks riding this setup with the mullet, with my favorite mullet wheel configuration. I spent a bit of time on my Stylus 27.5 hardtail switching it over to this wheel set and making it a mullet. And I really like the stylus as a mullet. And with that 27.5 bike, the bigger wheel up front, I got more traction. I went to a huge 2.6 rear tire of the Kush core. Man, it ended up working good. There were some growing pains. I had to learn how to jump it because mullets jump very imbalanced and funky in my opinion. Pumping up jump faces, I have a hard time with how different the two wheels accelerate. And the difference in these wheels, 29 and 27.5, I feel like it's actually a little bit more than the difference from 27.5 and 26. If you do the math, you notice a lot of the Rampage guys are 27.5, 26 mullets. So that's interesting. The bike geometry did not actually change. The mullet link, it's again a specialized link. It keeps things in essentially the stock configuration. I'm just shy of a 64 head tube angle, which is fine. I liked that setup with the dual 29 inch wheels. So I go to the mullet setup. One of the first things I notice is that I miss my traction in back. And I miss it on two fronts. I miss having the bigger wheel in back. And I also miss the cascade components link where it's a little bit softer top of the travel. And then on bigger hits and stuff, I guess I get a tiny bit more bum clearance with the rear wheel, but I lose this extra progression in the shock. I feel like moving the bike in the air, it's not hard with the 29 inch setup. And I honestly felt more comfortable because I knew I had more support when I went to land with that different linkage. Yeah, I have a personal feeling that bikes respond best to good geometry, first and foremost, then good suspension, and then all the other parts. And we changed the wheels and the geometry didn't actually change. We just lost a little bit of rear end traction and a little bit of rear wheel rollover and you know we lost a little bit of smoothness and I, I wasn't seeing any advantages there so let me know what am I blind to what am I missing what I'm gonna do I have All this right. wonderful 27.5 Kush core equipped rear wheel for my hardtail that I love does great wheelies I'm gonna swap these out for a carbon fiber Enduro 315C Industry 9 wheel set front and rear. That's the exact same wheel set I have on the rest of my bikes and I had on this prior with 29. 
and uh, I'll get some Maxxis tires, same as I had on the Dual 29 setup, and we'll see how that feels. I love these WTB big tires, but they're also more dry condition tires. Let me know in the comments, what am I missing here? Why do you prefer mullet? Did you buy this bike just to mullet it? And uh, yeah, I, I had a little tumble today that honestly I can't blame on the bike. I just came in a little too hot and didn't quite have the core strength to hold that amount of G-force through my turn and I went down. Asked for a little bit too much there. Yeah, glad I have my knee pad on. Dude, I just like came in hotter than I should have. A little bit of brake. I think it was rear brake. Brought me up and sorry for the corner, everyone. Pack it in so it doesn't get thrashed by someone, by the next person to do that. Yeah, I asked for a dollar and it only had 75 cents on the table. My bad. Would a 29 inch of wheel have saved me? Probably not, but it'd be fun on the internet to say, of course it would have. Anyhow, leave me your thoughts in the comments below. I'm gonna make a few setup changes and then we're gonna get back and do this again. Sound good? I think it sounds great. Let's do it. I often talk about how I like to keep test bikes relatively similar by putting on my control wheels, tires, cockpits, controls, the general things that make the most difference when you're riding. Well, I kind of went against my word and used my mullet wheel set. What I should have actually done is use my carbon fiber Enduro 315C wheel set. And I went to JensenUSA.com and I bought an aggressor double down 27.5 rear tire. Yes, they make those still. I really like the WTB stuff, but the Maxxis is a touch stickier, which is nice for the wet. And there's also, these are smaller duty tires than the ones in the WTB tires. So, Let's give this bike a second try with a second rendition of the mullet wheel set. I wanted to get a faster rolling wheel set and I feel like I really achieved that with this combo here. It feels a little bit lighter. Did that help the mullet setup? Did it make this the future of all my bicycles? Well, not exactly. How did it feel on the trail? Well, yes, it definitely rode like it was a bit lighter. You can see in some of my riding that I'm popping around a little bit more, kind of like usual, almost like I do with a 29 inch wheel. It definitely did roll faster than it did with the first tire setup. It rolled almost as fast as a good 29 inch wheel. If you're starting to hear a theme here, yes, it's that 29 inch wheels do work really well and the mullet setup might be almost as good, almost. On social media, many of you told me that a mullet wheel size actually manuals better than a traditional dual 29. You know what, I've learned after all these years, that when you're trying to do a long manual, it's how square and how big your rear tire is that matters. Big in terms of width. When it comes to manualing through bumps, that's really quite a challenging thing. And a 29 inch wheel is definitely easier to get through the bumps. So I'm not sold on mullet bikes being easier to manual. People mention how lively the mullet setup is compared to the stock 29. I don't know if lively is the word I'd use. Unexpectedly lively might be a better term. Because when you start in the corner, it will slide a little bit early, like earlier than a 29 inch wheel would. Is that good? Is that bad? Depends on your goals. I usually like a very predictable bike that I can then just not worry about and just think about the trail. And I get less of that with the mullet setup. Most mountain bikers I know kind of have a bit of a problem. In their garage, there's a pile of bike parts. This is what we call the parts bin. And one of the most fun things is trying to slap these random parts from the parts bin onto your bike just to experiment a little bit. I have a hunch that this is where the whole mullet idea originally came from, and it kind of breathes new life into an old bike. I think that's a big part of the excitement over the mullet setups. It's super fun to change that old bike into something new, and it'll probably work almost as good as the original 29er. If you have one of these bikes, which probably half of you in the comments do, uh, was the mullet compatibility the reason you bought it? Did you convert it? Is it everything you were expecting it to be? I do kind of think there's some overblown hype on this mullet setup thing and that it's very exciting to do this new thing that manufacturers don't want you to do. Oh my gosh, it must be better if they're keeping it from us. I don't know, I'm, let me know what's better about it because I've done this a long time and I'm, hard, I'm really struggling to see anything that's much better. When it's a 27.5 bike and you throw a bigger front wheel on it, that does usually help, but when it's a dual 29, and you lose some stuff in back. It seems more like you're losing overall. I'm totally willing to be wrong on this, so let me know in the comments. I, this might be a hot take, I don't intend it that way. Um, so I need all of your help. I really like this bike with the dual 29 inch wheels. I liked it even more with that Cascade Link. At first I felt like I didn't notice the Link that much, but let me tell you, now that I've gone back to a stock setup, I liked that Cascade Link quite a bit. So help me out here, what is the advantage of going to a mullet setup. Let me know in the comments down below, what does this do better? 
Thank you all so much for joining me. These videos are a lot of fun to put together, and if you enjoy content like this, you might really enjoy the riding tutorials that I only post over to my Patreon page. I'll link to that just below everything else in the description down below. Beyond all that, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, and I look forward to reading all your comments down below. Thanks, everyone. Peace and wheels. Oh, there we go. First try. Wish it was Friday. <laughs>